I usually have no idea where it's going to go. That's a lot of work that you need to put in and you have no idea if it's going to get picked up. Those three years could be completely wasted if... Hello and welcome to the Manga Education Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Chen. I run a manga and webtoon studio from the United States. I'm also an author. And today we're going to be answering questions that you guys submitted about the manga, webtoon, or anime industry. Sorry that I haven't posted a little bit. I have been sick for the last... I want to say month, pretty much. So today's first question is going to be by Cheng Moa. If you didn't know, if you submit questions via Patreon, you are pretty much guaranteed to get into the video. Definitely make sure that you guys are following the Patreon link is in description. It's free to follow. And there's also paid tiers to support the studio as well. How do you work through creative blocks slash brain fog? And you might have answered this already, but what is your preferred digital art space? Clip art, procreate, etc. Also hope you're getting slash feeling better. Yeah, so... I'm sick. I'm sorry. <coughs> How do you work through creative blocks slash brain fog? Great question. I actually had a really bad brain fog after I had COVID back in November. And then recently I've been pretty sick, like with a fever again, we really have to start taking care of myself a little bit better. Brain fog, honestly, guys, there's no really fighting through it. Unfortunately, I just kind of try and power through. But even I noticed I was working at probably like one fourth of the speed and capacity when I was in November. If it's sickness, then obviously it's like, hey, you got to rest up. If it's creative blocks hey you're feeling healthy and you just are having a, a creative block of some sort what really helps me is consuming content my username is inspired author and so therefore my belief is that a lot of the ideas that we get are inspired by something else and how do you get more input into create the creative engine that is your brain it is by going out and experiencing things so going on trips hang out with your friends doing something new that kind of stuff is a great way to start to build on that creative input that can inspire a new idea just consuming content so watching movies, reading books, playing video games, looking at things from an analytical and creative lens and seeing, hey, like that's a good idea. Maybe I can take this idea that I liked from this movie I saw and maybe this other aspect of this book I saw and then this venture I had on this trip to Italy and then I fuse them together, create a new idea and concept and it feels fresh. And so that's how I get through creative blocks and brain fog, which, you know, I usually don't have because I usually have too much content because I'm just watching and experiencing things way too much, which means that I'm, I'm wasting a lot of time watching, not wasting, but I'm spending a lot of time watching and reading stuff. And that always keeps me from having that kind of creative block or brain fog. Preferred digital art space, I would say Clip Studio is what the industry standard is right now. Everyone's working in Clip Studio. Um, I have one teammate that is working in Procreate or no, he's working in IBS X Paint, but but even then we are kind of trying to push him to use Clip Studio. Some people use Photoshop also, but Clip Studio is the manga and webtoon standard. Everyone's pretty much using that. Hope you're feeling better. Yes, I'm. it's a work in progress. The next question is by Higan Bana, who's also a Patreon. How long could you estimate it takes you to finish all random materials for a pitch on average? It really depends if it's a longer pitch, like a Netflix type pitch deck. I could take a super long time. You know, honestly, I've done stuff from developing a full pitch in a day to spending weeks on a pitch. So I think it really depends on how much content you need because depending on the publisher and the distributor, they all require different things. It's hard to put how long it takes for you to create all the written materials. I would say speed and being able to put out both quality content at like a pretty fast pace is pretty important because, you know, you could spend, let's say three years on a pitch to Webtoon, Netflix, manga, whatever. And those three years could be completely wasted if they say, hey, your idea sucks, do something else right and then you have to start all the way all over again what i like to do is i'll pitch out a bunch of stuff i'll create a bunch of pitches the publishers come to me and they're like what do you have brandon and i have like 10 projects here all lined up and they can pick and choose what they're really liking i didn't spend three years on all those projects you never really know what the publisher is going to want so i think a lot of writers i see spending a really long time on developing their concept when they really don't know if it's a market fit might be not wasting their time but might not be the most efficient use of their time where they could create a pitch in, in a lot shorter time in my opinion it has to still be good it has to still be good so that really balancing the quality and speed aspect is really the focus of serialized manga and webtoons so it's, that's something to take into a, into account how long does it take for the artist you work with to finish the artwork for a pitch on average it really depends on what the pitch requires if it's just character designs artists are pretty fast at that kind of stuff if it's like hey we want sequential panels 
or hey, we want a full chapter. All that stuff really matters. So it really depends on what the publisher distributor needs. So there's no real one standard answer, unfortunately. What part of working on a pitch would you say is the most difficult part for you? The most difficult part, I think, is probably outlining a season. When you're pitching to television or if you're pitching to Webtoon or you're pitching to manga publishers, they'll usually ask you, hey, what's your plan for the entire arc or the entire story of your project? And the key thing is here, when I'm creating a project pitch, I usually have no idea where it's going to go. I'll be honest with you guys. I create the rough concept. I know where the beginning is. Maybe I have some rough idea of where it's going to go, but all the in-between, that's usually stuff that you discover along the way as you're developing the project. And it's tough because publishers who want all that stuff from beginning, middle and end, the entire thing, that's a lot of work that you need to put in and you have no idea if it's going to get picked up. And a lot of the stuff also changes as you're actually writing the project. Rarely are you creating a whole season beat sheet and you're sticking to the whole thing throughout the entire serialization. That rarely happens. You see what the readers are liking, what they're not liking. You see what the editors are saying to you and things just change. And so I think creating a season beat sheet that is supposed to be a representation of what the story is going to look like sometimes feels like a waste of time because you know it's going to be different at, in the end. That being said, it's good for conveying to the publishers where your head is in terms of where you think the story is going to go. So I understand why they want it, but you know, when you're doing it for the first time, it kind of feels like not a waste of time because you are doing exploration for your characters and your story as you're doing it, but it just doesn't feel like the best use of time because you know it's all going to get scrapped anyway. What part of working on a pitch would you say comes easiest for you? Oh my God, Higana Bana with the real questions here probably the log line the log line is basically hey can i sell you the story in one to two sentences and i'm pretty good at coming up with log lines because you just come up with a general idea or a concept where a lot of beginner writers struggle with is if you cannot condense your story into a log line it's really hard to sell to publishers it's really hard to sell to people and it probably feels like your story is a little bit all over the place but that being said there are some complex stories that are really hard to put into a log line like game of thrones right game of thrones if you have one grand log line it's like you know they're all fighting for that whatever the throne of the empire or whatever you know that log line does not capture the sheer epicness and large scale that is game of thrones oftentimes it's quite hard to fit larger concepts into there but for manga webtoons you actually want your concept to be very simple naruto wants to become hokage one piece is about a guy who's trying to become pirate king that kind of stuff and then you expand it as you're going through the story log line is probably my favorite part because that's just really fast to do and it's super fun to just come up with cool ideas that people might potentially like i know production time for a pitch may vary on the plan length of a project. Are there any big differences when it comes to planning a pitch for a manga project versus a webtoons project? I'll say that the webtoon pitching process is probably more similar to what I've seen for if you're pitching to Apple or Netflix, where you're pitching like a season, right? Of, of television almost. For manga, it's probably closer to you're doing a one shot first. And then that one shot is kind of like a test taste tester to the audience and the readers. And if the readers like it, then the publisher will then be like, okay, we like the one shot. Let's expand it out to an official serialization. So I think it's not so much the pitch that's different, but it's actually the process of which publishers use to test projects is, is just a little bit different. Okay, we finally got through the Patreon questions. And so now I'm gonna get a little bit into some of the questions like I have on Instagram. What's the process of creating your own manga studio? So there's actually not a lot of manga and webtoon studios in the United States. And that's probably because there's not a lot of people who have made a lot of projects. Most of the creators that I've seen at least are doing like one to two projects. But if you're creating a mass amount of projects like I am, usually that's when you start to scale to a studio level. And the reason a lot of people don't do studios is because it's quite hard to create so many multiple different projects and manage them. And a lot of the strong talent in the US or uh, in the West at least are artists and the artist writers in particular, it's really hard for them to work on multiple projects because they have to draw everything, right? For me, I'm just like more of a creative director writer. So it's uh, easier for me to hop around onto different projects. If you wanna know more about the process and what I do on a day to day, I post shorts like every couple of days on my daily life uh, as, a, as a studio owner. What makes a perfect protagonist for a specific story in your opinion? In my opinion, a protagonist that is flawed, you know, there's no one perfect way to write a protagonist, but I really like protagonists that are flawed and just develop over the course of the story. I really don't like the a lot of the stories that I've seen in Japanese isekai stories or Korean webtoon stories, which are catering to a certain audience of people who want to self-insert themselves into like this story with a perfect protagonist that is, you know, in a harem and in another world where everything's going good for them and they're overpowered and stuff. That's not really my type of cup of tea. I'm more into the types of stories where characters are quite flawed and they're going through a development 
that is ultimately meant to teach them about life. A good example would be Vinland Saga's main character, Thorfinn. He has a great character arc. While the author might lose a lot of readers because of Thorfinn's arc towards, you know, his, his farming and peaceful arc, in terms of like how the character is laid out, it really works really well. So flawed characters that have development are, are some of my favorites. Where should I first upload my story? Like what's a good site or company? Sorry, I'm curious. Um, you know, here's the thing. If you're doing your own project, I would just upload everywhere. I would upload everywhere. If you're not tied to one specific platform and that you don't have a exclusivity deal with them, post everywhere. So I'm talking Webtoon, Tapas, Global Comics, Manga Plus, Voice Me, just post everywhere, dude. It's kind of like when you're posting on TikTok or you post a video, you're also posting on Instagram, you're also posting on Facebook, you're also posting on YouTube, right? Don't just, unless you have an exclusivity deal, don't just put, put it in one place because everyone has different audiences and it's just a better way to branch out. So I'd say post it everywhere. Yeah, I think that's the end of today's video. I noticed that we're going a little bit over time. So guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in for this week's Manga Education podcast. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment, drop a like for the algorithm because we want more people to find out about the podcast it really helps the video and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And finally, if you're interested in supporting the manga and webtoon studio we're doing and learning more about how to create manga and webtoons, join our Patreon. It's free to join, but also there's paid tier lists that will give you behind the scenes on how we're doing everything at the studio. Once again, thank you guys so much and I'll catch you guys on hopefully next week's video. Peace.